Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're adding to our series on food from TV and film with a Korean kimbap inspired by this scene from Minari. Oh, kimbap is Hey, what are these? 아주 좋은 생각을 하셨습니다. 그러잖아도 오클라마 시리 근처로 한국 사람들이 많이 이사를 오거든요. 예, 그러니까요. 농작물을 캘리포니아에서 받으시니까. Okay, so real quick, if you haven't seen Minari yet and or are not yet familiar with Steven Yeun's body of small indie films, you need to re-up your Netflix membership immediately because this is one of my favorite movies of the year and it just perfectly captures the struggle of cooking Asian comfort food somewhere where you can't actually find Asian ingredients. For those who are not familiar, a Korean kimbap, or kimbap as it is occasionally pronounced here in the States, is a rice roll that's wrapped in dry nori seaweed with a number of veggies and proteins folded in. Now, while it more or less will look to the unsuspecting eye like a Japanese sushi roll, a Korean kimbap is actually quite different because of what it typically contains inside. While a sushi roll is most typically made with some form of raw fish, a kimbap can contain a wide variety of cooked ingredients. For our version today, I'll be going with a classic combination of carrot, egg, spinach, and my two personal favorite ingredients, some pickled daikon radish, as well as some bulgogi steak, borrowing from our bibimbap recipe a few weeks back. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so up first, I'm starting things off with the marinade for our bulgogi steak. Now, if you have been following along, we have definitely covered bulgogi in this series already, so I'm just gonna speed right through this, but if you're looking for it, you can find out more about our bulgogi in our bibimbap recipe here. I'm starting things off by crushing and mincing four cloves of garlic, followed by fine mincing one inch or about a tablespoon of ginger. Then next up is a quarter of an Asian pear, which I'm peeling, removing its core, and then giving a fine mince and saving the remainder for snacking. Next up is my flank steak here, which I'm separating from its membrane and then thinly slicing against the grain of the meat. Finally, I'm tossing this all into a mixing bowl and then adding four tablespoons of soy sauce, two tablespoons of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon of sesame oil, and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Then finally, I'm setting this all aside for 30 minutes or up to one hour to marinate while we move on to our rice. Now, I know a lot of folks have been asking for a video on how to make rice, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to touch on this. We're going with two cups of jasmine rice here. I'm adding it to a strainer and then giving the rice a thorough rinse and repeating until the water starts to run clear. This took me three bowls of water altogether, but if you're not trying to film yourself, you can also just run this under the faucet in the sink too. This is technically an optional step, but it is going to keep our rice from turning clumpy when it finishes cooking. Then next is the oldest hand-me-down trick in the history of all Asian cooking, which I refer to as the knuckle technique. Instead of measuring out our water like a normal human would do, I'm adding my rice to the pot and then filling the pot up with water such that when I put my pointer finger into the pot and touch the rice's surface, the water should reach up to my first knuckle. Now, some of you might be wondering, but Wu, isn't every knuckle a different lake? What about the different sizes and shapes of rice cookers? What about Instapot cooking? Isn't Wu actually your last name? To which I would reply, I have no goddamn clue. I can tell you I've been making rice this way for over two decades. My parents have been making rice this way even longer. They learned this from my grandparents, and I would bet that any Asian that you speak to would tell you this exact same trick. It works every time, honestly, even better than when I've measured out the water. I don't know, it's some kind of strange magic. Once our rice is cooked though, I'm adding it to a wide mixing bowl and then seasoning it with a tablespoon of sushi rice vinegar, or in lieu of that, a tablespoon of rice vinegar plus a pinch of sugar and salt. I'm tossing our rice to combine and then setting it aside to cool while we get to our veggies. 
Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, you can make a kimbap with a wide variety of veggies. Cucumber or kimchi would be a fairly traditional inclusion. Today, however, I'm starting off with some carrots that are peeled and then julienned, followed by some pickled daikon radish, which I'm specifically going with the long version here. You may also find these at markets shorter and or sliced in half, which is not what we're looking for. I'm slicing about half of one of these into thin strips and doing my very best to cut a straight line here. Next up are my eggs, which I'm combining with about half a teaspoon of cornstarch to keep them from turning rubbery in our aggressive wok heat. I'm adding a third egg here because, I don't know, I like eggs. Then I'm whisking this up to combine and moving on to our spinach. We're gonna be blanching our spinach today, so before we head over to the stove, I'm setting up an ice bath here so that we can halt our spinach cook as precisely as possible. Then over on the stove, I'm bringing a pot of water to boil and dropping my spinach in for about 15 seconds until wilted and then straining and immediately dropping into my ice bath to halt the cooking and prevent any carryover cook. Once that's nice and cooled down, I'm shaking out the water and then seasoning with a tablespoon of sesame oil and a pinch of kosher salt. Back over on the stove, I've got my wok heated up as hot as possible and we're getting ready to sear our bulgogi steak. This is four tablespoons of peanut oil to start and as always, long yao for your non-stick surface. Then I'm adding my steak here a piece at a time, flat side down and searing undisturbed for two minutes before flipping. I'm repeating this with my remaining steak. This took me two batches altogether. And by the end of which you should be greeted by some very tasty, crispy looking steak that you'll have to resist the urge to eat immediately. Next, I'm setting that aside and repeating my long yao process here with another two tablespoons of peanut oil and giving my carrots a very quick flash cook for about two minutes, just long enough to cook off some rawness. Then finally, I'm repeating all of this one more time with my eggs, which I'm adding to the wok and then rotating sort of like an omelet to get as much of that raw egg in contact with the wok surface as possible. Then I'm saying a little prayer, putting way too much faith in the nonstick surface of my wok and giving the eggs a flip. Hopefully you built up your courage a little faster than me and they don't burn like mine did here. It's okay, we'll just flip it over and no one will know. I'm slicing this up into strips and we're ready to make some rolls. So I went back and forth on ways to make these rolls without a sushi mat like this. My best idea was some skewers and plastic wrap, but I honestly think it can't really be done without one of these things though, and they're also like $2 on Amazon, so don't be cheap. I've got my nori sheet here, which we're going to place a shiny side down. This is really important or else it's gonna stick to the mat. If you have nori like mine, it may also be perforated to make the rolling a bit easier, so be sure to place that perforation in the same direction as the mat. Now, first off, let's talk about what you don't want to do, because I made a bunch of mistakes here. First off, you don't want to use too much rice like this. This is way too much rice. No one likes a gimbap that's more rice than it is steak, so remember that you're rolling this on top of itself and it's gonna compound quite a bit. Then second, you'll also want to be sure to position your ingredients closer to the middle of the roll, not at the bottom, like this. Your instinct is going to tell you to start at the bottom so that you can fit as much stuff in here as possible, because that makes sense. But actually, if you do that, your roll is going to end up kind of crooked and off-center, like this. So I'm laying a very thin layer of rice here on my nori sheet and then adding my ingredients about an inch above the bottom line of the nori sheet, starting off with my daikon, followed by my eggs, carrots, spinach, and of course the bulgogi steak, leaving a similar one inch buffer at the very top as well. Then I'm using my mat to roll this up very carefully and chopping the edges off here for quality control. Also, it looks better. Then I'm slicing these things up about an inch wide per piece and we're ready to eat. Okay, so I'm not gonna pretend like this was an easy dish to make because it was definitely pretty labor intensive, but damn, these were good. The bukoki steak is packed with flavor and umami and is complemented by the sweet pickled daikon really nicely. The carrots have a nice crispy freshness to it thanks to our very brief wok fry, all rounded out by the fluffy eggs and rice. 
It is certainly a little bit labor intensive, but that said though, these work great for meal prepping because they're nice and compact, so you can totally make a dozen of them and set them aside for a week's worth of lunches, or if you're like me, a day and a half of constant snacking. So if you're looking for some fun and healthy meal prep ideas, this is definitely a great one, and I would guess is the same reason why you'll commonly find them pre-made in markets like it appears in Minari. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. This was a super fun one to dive into and I'm glad I finally had a chance to take a look at rice cooking because I know a lot of folks have been asking for that. As always, we'll be cooking through this one live this coming Monday right here on YouTube at 6.30 PST. So if you'd like, tune in then and cook along with me too. Also, if you're looking for it, the written recipes always live on the home base wucancook.com as well as the schedule of live streams and releases, new Wu cook speeds, tunes, and more. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, press some buttons, do the internet and I'll see you soon. Bye.